self-proclaimed COG who murdered his own family. Messac Dama was born in Haiti on July 2nd, 1976. He belonged to a low-income family and endured a very rough upbringing. All his childhood, he experienced domestic violence, which made him rude and cruel. Massac was raised as an evangelical Christian by his mother and father. His parents abandoned him and left for the United States when he was only 10 years old. They left him in Haiti with a family of many members who practiced Haitian voodoo. At age 19, Massac left Haiti and moved to the United States. He started working in a kitchen restaurant as a chef close to his home neighborhood and undoubtedly produced delicate dishes. People who worked alongside him were described as friendly and hardworking people. Masak even described himself as best of the best when it came to his line of work. Masak met a woman named Gerline and fell in love with her. They dated for several years and decided to tie the knot in 2006. Gerline and Masak started to grow their family and had five children. After a few years of marriage, things began to change. Though he was highly regarded at work, things were slightly different at home. In 2009, Masak got into an argument with his wife and started beating her. Later, he got arrested for domestic violence charges. Gerline tried to convince him several times that she was honest with him, but Masak never believed her and started to act like a paranoid. He was often suspicious of his wife. Messac was warned by the authorities not to hurt Gerline anymore, and they told him to cut off contact with his wife, which never happened. He made several tries to win her back. He sent flowers to her every day and visited her home without the authorities' knowledge. He tried to convince Gerline to come back to him again. The Department of Children and Families came to know that he was secretly visiting his wife and children. Gerline decided to change the house door locks and informed her husband that he was no longer welcome in the house. She was doing it to protect herself and the kids from his violence. The Department of Children knew that Gerline and the children were in danger, but they didn't do anything to prevent Massac from reaching them. Massac kept visiting the house and would often be sitting outside the house at 3 a.m. in a car after his work shift. He was trying to check if his wife was alone at home or with someone else. Gerline decided that she would never live with a violent person because her bad relationship was affecting her children. Massac stayed several nights outside the home until he decided to break into the house. He broke the window to enter the home, and that is when Gerline chose to move out. She planned to find a safe place for herself and her children. Soon, she moved to a townhouse. After two months, in March 2009, Gerline allowed Massac to move in with her and lifted the barring order against her husband. She felt guilty that she was keeping her children away from their father. Massac moved back into the family home, but Gerline told him that she hasn't forgiven him yet and still plans to divorce him. As soon as Massac heard the words, he got hyper and yelled at Gerline. He said that he would kill her if anything like that happened. Massac never changed himself. Instead, he became more suspicious about his wife. He would often check her phone behind her back and follow her to her workplace to check whether or not she was at work or having an affair with someone else. His suspicion grew when Gerline asked him for that divorce. In September 2009, Gerline left the home at 5 a.m. for work. While walking to the office, she suddenly realized that Messac was following her. It was time to take the final decision. After work, she went back home and waited for Messac. Masak went to work that day, but he couldn't concentrate on his work, so he clocked out two hours early after telling his boss that he wasn't feeling well and had a terrible headache. He made his way to a local supermarket and purchased a knife, duct tape, and chewing gum. He went back home where his wife was waiting for him. Gerline handed him papers telling him to sign the divorce papers. She was fed up with his everyday arguments. Gerline was holding an infant child when Massac suddenly attacked her. The infant dropped on the floor. She saw her child screaming and couldn't control her anger. She started walking to the phone to call the police. Massac fell into a violent rage and stopped Gerline. He quickly tied Gerline with a rope and then put duct tape on her mouth. After that, he took out a knife and slaughtered her, leaving her to die. After that, he went after his own children, slew them all one by one like a butcher. Not even once did his hands tremble. Massac stayed in the house until the sunrise. He planned to attempt suicide, but he was a coward who didn't dare to do so. Instead, he packed his suitcase and drove to Miami International Airport to flee. 
After 48 hours, Gerline's family reported her missing. Her colleagues said that she didn't show up for work for two days without informing them. When the police went to Gerline's home, no one opened the door, so they decided to break in the house. They came across a truly horrendous murder scene. Gerline Demain was found on a small bathroom floor, face down in a large pool of dried blood, with a black trash bag over her head and her limbs bound with duct tape. Her autopsy revealed blunt force injury to her right elbow and right eye and deep, extensive, sharp force injury to her left shoulder and neck. Deputies then discovered the body of Meshek Dama in the second floor bedroom, face down on a mattress atop an area of dried blood. The autopsy of Meshek revealed sharp force injuries to the palm of his right hand and extensive sharp force injuries encircling almost the entirety of his neck. Upon entry into another second floor bedroom, deputies discovered the bodies of the remaining four Dama children, two on the bedroom floor beside one another, one on the bed, and one on a mattress on the floor of the bedroom. All four sustained sharp force injuries to their necks. The police began the investigation and started looking for Masak. Masak fleed to his home country, but he was arrested three days later by the U.S. Marshals. He told the police that he was planning to surrender, but he wanted to say goodbye to his family. Masak said, I know what I did was wrong. Bad spirits made me do it. You think I want to live after what I did? At least one reported instance involved Dama going without showering for over 30 consecutive days. Local news sources reported that the smell coming from Masak's cell was so bad that it made other inmates physically ill. He confessed to his murders and asked to be given the death penalty. He began to behave in a bizarre way behind bars, which led to the judge sending him for mental health treatment. At the same time, the doctor declared him fit, which meant that he murdered his family in a complete sense. Masak routinely refused the deputy's orders and was the subject of numerous disciplinary actions by the jail staff including at least one incident where Dama was sprayed with pepper spray after hiding under his bunk. In August 2010, a court appearance involved him singing aloud until his lawyer and the presiding judge told him to calm down. As the case proceeded, Masak's courtroom behavior became less disruptive, but not necessarily more cooperative. At nearly every court appearance attended in 2017, he could be seen sitting silently with his head resting on the table, possibly asleep. On June 23, 2017, Masak unexpectedly rose to his feet and stated in open court that he wanted to discharge his attorneys, represent himself, and plead guilty to the charges against him. At a later hearing on July 21st, 2017, there was a determination of his ability to express himself. In October 2017, Masak wrote a note to the presiding judge which read, Go ahead, continue your work, may my blood be upon your shoulders. Signing the note, C-O-G. Despite all the drama, he was given a death sentence for killing his entire family. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel to see our latest content.